There's a scene in Wizard of Oz in which we see a demonstration of the magic art of cinema. The character of Dorothy finds herself in the middle of a terrible storm. Suddenly, she is knocked unconscious, but then her dream begins to reproduce the experience of watching a movie. So Dorothy awakens to find herself trapped inside a tornado, whereupon looking out her window, she sees a series of extraordinary images speed past her. So what is on the surface a girl looking at a passing storm actually turns into a viewer observing the magic of a movie screen. Here, still images are put to motion and reality is turned into a dream space. But what better film captures the tension between dreams and reality than The Wizard of Oz? The MGM musical is more of a legend than a movie now and despite being almost 80 years old, the film continues to endure even to this day. So why is Wizard of Oz able to work its magic over audiences after all these years? Well, just give me a few minutes of your time and let's go back and take a closer look at The Wizard of Oz. We can look at The Wizard of Oz as an old-fashioned fairy tale, like Snow White, Hansel and Gretel, and Little Red Riding Hood. We have the story of a child who leaves home and sets out into a forest of fears. It is in overcoming these fears that the child will learn how to be an adult. So like many classic fairy tales, Wizard is about a journey, a journey from childhood to adulthood. On her bleak gray farm in Kansas, Dorothy is treated like a child. Aside from her Aunt M, the only parental figures in her life are the three male farmhands who each work for her family. Now when Dorothy is transported to the colorful world of Oz, she finds herself in a place where she is the adult. In fact, Dorothy becomes something of a parental figure, a mother figure to the lion, the scarecrow, and the tin man each of whom act as a surrogate for the three male figures of her Kansas farm. So, The Wizard of Oz is just one variation on the same idea we see in children's stories like Peter Pan, The Chronicles of Narnia, and even Harry Potter to some degree. All these stories deal with children who want to escape the world of adults, and in doing so, enter into a parallel world a fantasy world where magic and wizardry and other fantastical things give them a power that they don't have in their real world. I've always thought of Wizard of Oz as a movie about dreams and illusions, but it's only when the characters set aside those illusions that they discover the truth. Let's think about this. The great and powerful wizard who runs Oz is in reality a flimflam man who isn't so powerful at all. The film's villain, the Wicked Witch of the West, is undone simply by a bucket of water. And remember, Dorothy's friends also discover that they already possess the qualities that they desired from the wizard. So, the lion's cowardice, the tin man's lack of a heart, or the scarecrow's lack of a brain or all an illusion onto themselves. The final illusion to be shattered is that of the film itself. When Dorothy says there's no place like home, everything we see simply fades away, and we discover that the journey to Oz was all just a dream in Dorothy's mind. Or was it? One thing that leads to the dreamlike look of Wizard of Oz is the film's use of color. Wizard of Oz isn't just a colorful movie, it's almost hyper-color. Audiences had never seen a world like this before, filled with green castles and yellow roads. The colors of Oz stand in stark contrast to the black and white world of Dorothy's Kansas farm. But we should keep in mind that Wizard of Oz was released during the time of the Great Depression and perhaps audiences looked at the film and saw a world that was a utopia. Oz's Emerald City is a land of abundance 
where no one wants for anything. So while the world of Oz offers an escape for Dorothy, the film Wizard of Oz also offered an escape for depression era audiences. The Wizard of Oz is so famous that the story has even been retold in various different movies. The 1979 film The Wiz is a reimagining of the Oz story with an all-black cast. Here, Dorothy, played by Diana Ross, is a timid school teacher who is whisked away to an Oz that resembles an urban area like New York complete with subways and sweatshops. The film's not perfect, but it contains a great performance by the late Michael Jackson as the Scarecrow. The 1985 film, Return to Oz, is sort of an unofficial sequel to the 1930s film, but is more of an adaption of Frank Baum's Wizard of Oz books. It's a darker and scarier film in the 30s musical, and it's even gone on to become a cult movie. Perhaps the most bizarre retelling of The Wizard of Oz comes from director David Lynch. His film, Wild at Heart, filled with these bizarre references to Oz and attempts to parallel the couple's escape from home with Dorothy's journey over the rainbow. If you're truly wild at heart, you'll fight for your dreams. Don't turn away from love, sailor. Don't turn away from love. I think part of the reason why Wizard of Oz continues to endure all this time is it plays into a basic fantasy that most of us have. That we can escape our surroundings. That we can change our present situation. That we can dream of a different world and a better world that lies just over the rainbow. Thanks for listening. Please post comments below and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.